my hump, my hump, my lovely lady hump. I'm not skating to anything with references to lady humps? I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. <sighs> no, it's not. It's gets gross. the people going. Hi, everyone. It's your boy, Zach. So, closed out uh, First Kill graphic novel last night so I could have a final count um, uh, so I can make the backers list and we can get that out. If your address has changed and you forgot to update it, you just go to uh, your account in your order for this book. It has to be this book and then you change it. Good day yesterday. I uh, requested the uh, opt out for first kill and then I did a speak through of 10 pages of dialogue for the Jawbreakers Contingency. Astonishing X-Men Xenogenesis. Now, I did read this before, but I read it... Um, it's like that thing I always say about the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk. When I saw it, I didn't think it was that great. I watch it now, it seems really good because it's so much better than what we've been getting. So I read this in the, uh, the Wells Branch Library like a year after it came out. And uh, I remembered it. I remember kind of like seeing the cover and thinking it was a little bit too edgy. And then I saw Warren Ellis's name. I'm like, oh, geez. Because, you know, he always had to do his, his thing, um, his uh, snarky, ironic bit, which I was never, was never a huge fan of Warren Ellis's uh, writing. Um, but, I mean, Carr Andrews, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. So um, something amazing happened. Like, writers used to have like style and flavor to the writing and they used to be provocative to get a reaction sometimes in a cheap way sometimes in an effective way which blade top cow to relaunch series reboot in july 2024 so um i just saw the thumbnail so uh i, I didn't it, I, it was on my phone so i couldn't see the, the subtitle but it's like, okay, female character, so what lesbian is writing? Because it's a female character, so it has to have a female writer, even if the character was created by men. And women have to be gay or pretend to be gay to work in mainstream comics, so which one is it? And it was like, it's Marguerite Bennett. It's like, wait, Marguerite Bennett from like 10 years ago, Marguerite Bennett? I thought she was gone like she worked at uh marvel specifically a lot but something happened and then she was only getting indie work let's uh let's see if she's a they them now so apparently she's been out since right when it started to be a massive benefit in media <laughs> so this is marguerite bennett she is of course gay because female writing at marvel or dc or any of the the major indies uh, yeah you so I guessed correctly. When I cynically saw they were bringing back Witchblade, I said, which lesbian is going to write it? And in this case, the lesbian is Marguerite Bennett. Um, but it doesn't matter because although she did write the uh, uh, unsolicited opinions of Israel, which uh, it, it still bothers me the way that was uh, misinterpreted or just not understood or... It was obviously supposed to be like a zing against like conservative fans, but like it wasn't supposed to be the actual dialogue when it was in brackets. It was like a like a meta thing. Like he wasn't saying this exact dialogue. He was saying the equivalent in Asgard. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm reading this and like it's good. I mean, it's got great art from uh, Carr Andrews. So it kind of starts off in a, like a typical X-Men slash X-Files type of way. Something mysterious and violent happens somewhere. The X-Men find out about it. They need to go investigate. And then there's a conversation because this is going to happen in Africa. So uh, Scott Summers is kind of like the uptight white liberal. He's like, hey, Storm, I need you to take the lead on this because, you know, the blacks <laughs> like essentially and then storm is kind of like kind of like making fun of him she's she's just like oh yeah the blacks you know you know those blacks yeah and and so he's all kind of like 
hand wringing about it. And, you know, she's basically like, okay, I'll take the lead, but you're being kind of weird about this. <laughs> so then they have the suit up. And um, I was listening to a video by Casually Comics, and apparently in the pitch, okay, this is going to blow your mind. So back in the day, straight white cis men, and by the way, Grant Morrison has never said that he's a they, them. He's, he's done some like vague phrases. He never asked to, to, for people to use they, them uh, pronouns. But um, he was doing the pitch, and what he described in the pitch is much more of this than the uh than what we got um uh but also like he was doing little zings against fanboys and stuff like that and um uh sasha crystal um she seemed kind of not taken aback but kind of like why would you do this like she was being kind of funny about it but he was being provocative like that's you know it's you know like blades of glory like <laughs> gets them interested. Um, and that used to be a, a common thing. Uh, Logan is like, uh, how come we all have to wear your G.I. Joe uniform of the week? <laughs> um, so they're going off on an adventure. And in some ways, it's, you know, fairly standard. But you can definitely see with, like, the way that um, Emma is being drawn. It's it's really over the top. But it's also 100% in character. It's so strange right now where, like, Emma has approved body type when it's literally been established that she has uh, uh, implants, that she, um, I believe they've even, even established that she's not even British. It's just like an affectation. So when you go to the, um, the comments, the first one, all they can get over is this just that like Emma, Emma is, is like super curvy and everyone's like, well, what the hell is this? This is so offensive. Somebody's like, they did my girl wrong. It's like, no, that's that actually fits. Now, they, now he made her really short, which is a little weird, because I always thought she's supposed to be like regal. Um, she looks like a like a like a chav, <laughs> like a chav who won the lottery. Is it chav or chav? Um, but anyway, so like the first one, just all people can just get over is like the the kind of awkward conversation about race, and then visually how Emma was portrayed. But if you stick with it, every issue, people kind of unclench about the things that offend them, that were provocative, and they just pay more and more attention to the story. And it finishes like really well. It's a really solid story. Apparently it refers to something that happened in X-Men Ghost Box, which I, it's like two issues. There's like five different artists. I'm like, oh, spare me that shit. Um, but, uh, so they're still doing the, like the very over the top art. I just think this looks so good. Car Andrews always tries like different art styles right here. And, uh, this was, this was very pushed and over the top and it's, but it's probably in my mind, the most successful, but they actually, uh, give him some real depth throughout the book. At first it looks like he's just generic. African warlord with a cyborg enhancement, but there's some real uh, depth to him. So we get some great action-packed uh, ending to the story. The whole book was was great, but it feels like the the provocative nature of it got people going, got people talking about it. But it made like a lot of people read it and then stick with it because at the end, all of the comments are just about like how satisfying of a story it was so you know uh he has the warlord whose name is like dr crocodile or something like that because of because of this right here and he says all white people are insane now if you've read the entire book it does fit this character and his point of view by the way how is i mean i guess it could just be magnetic or there could be like a little thing in there um I was like, how is this sticking around his ear, which isn't really there? Um, but it's it's provocative. It gets people's attention. It's like, what the hell? Why is he saying that? Um, and uh, it reminds me, currently there's a, a meme on TikTok where it says, uh, the only thing that white people are afraid of is black people. And it shows white people. And I'm not talking about like 
the those uh, Duck Dynasty type of old like guys. Like it'll just be a woman in college in the South, and then she'll just be like, "Oh, a critter," and she'll just walk into the forest and pick up, you know, some varmint. And, it's, and it's so and and it, like a lot of white people have like crazy animals that they keep at home. And so the running joke is the only thing that white people are afraid of is black people. Um, but all white people are insane. It's provocative. It catches your attention. And then you tell them a really great story. The thing about Marguerite Bennett is hiring her. Sorry. Is she a they them? Hiring they them is no different than, you know, if they would have hired Marguerite Bennett, the story is going to read the same if they hired Teeny Howard or Jody Hauser, or Celeste Bromfman, or what was that one writer? She was from like a Nordic country, and uh, they were giving her a lot of work for like a year or two. It seems like it's evaporated. I think it was because like she kept emphasizing she was a mom. They're like, look, you really gotta, you really gotta be gay or pretend to be gay. This whole mom thing is just really queering the deal. No pun intended. Um, but you understand what I'm saying. Basically, every female writer writes exactly the same these days, but it's kind of the same with, you know, if you put David Pipos on a book or if you put almost any other male writer, everyone is so trying so hard to be inoffensive that it's actually offensive. <laughs> like, there's nothing to hold on to. There, there's there's no grit there's no texture you just slide just com if you're if you're climbing up they've done that a couple of times uh with uh spider-man where he starts to like lose his his powers of being able to adhere to things and um you know he usually talk about like oh glass is the most difficult thing to uh climb traditionally because there's just not a lot to uh grab onto but um yeah you just kind of just slide all the way uh, off. Anyway, thanks for watching.